All right, welcome back all my brothers and sisters to another Bible study slash real talk video. I pray y'all are having a wonderful, blessed weekend as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and all the praise and worship. My title now says, Babies Being Born Out of Wedlock. Will they make it to heaven? According to the Bible. Will they make it to heaven? Very good question. Uh, let me give a shout out to you. Your screen name says uh, Renee Blanco. Um, and forgive me if I'm saying the name wrong. Um, great question. You looked at the video I did yesterday about few will be in heaven. And in that video you asked me, will babies born out of wedlock make it to heaven? This is a very um, powerful question. Uh, very debatable for a lot of people. I hear people uh, talk about this all the time and even quit speaking to each other behind this subject because real talk, um, a lot of people have been born out of wedlock. And if you don't rightly divide the word, then yeah, you're going to put all babies born out of wedlock in the lake of fire pretty much. Not going to see heaven, you can say because you're not rightly dividing the word. Um, we have to, like the Bible say, we have to rightly divide the word. So, um, great question. So, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy um, 23, chapter 23, verse 2, because this is where a lot of people get this from. And it says in, in verse 2 of chapter 23 of Deuteronomy, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation, shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Now, we know that this is Moses, the mediator, the in-between man, the spokesperson, talking to Israel. Now, let's keep in mind in this old covenant, um, a lot of people make the mistake by everything they read, they try to apply it to nowadays. They try to put everything that the Bible say to the Gentiles, which simply means nations. And we have to understand who's doing the talking, who is talking to, and who's important and what we read. And if you do that with the Bible, that's the best way to do it. Know who's talking and who is talking to because there are so many things in the Bible rolled that was rolled only to who? Israel. Gentiles were grafted in spiritually. So we have to make that point um, because so many people a seed like we talked about in another video proof text theology they'll take one or two scriptures and be like oh you know I, I had a child out of wedlock so my child ain't gonna make it understand that the most high loves the children how the children get here is one thing sin when it happens like this but that child didn't ask to be here and that child is not going to pay for what you done nowadays. Let's understand that off the top. A child is a blessing. So many children have had so many terrible things happen to them. I know too many people that was born out of wedlock that turned into some dynamic individuals, my brothers and sisters. So this is Moses once again talking to the children of Israel. This is the Mosaic law. Or some may pronounce it Mosaic Law, however you want to pronounce it. Remember, when you started talking about laws also in the Bible, there was way more laws. It would mean you had man-made laws. That's what a lot of people don't, you know, do is rightly divide the word because it was so many laws. But Israel was special. Israel is special. Um, the chosen ones, we all, as chosen ones, are special. And the Most High had his divine order and still do. And when you start talking about the chosen ones, so that means they had to be, we had to be set apart. You see what I'm saying? Now, I said that to say this. When a child, when you're looking at this scripture, a child being born out of wedlock, they was looked at back then as unworthy of Israelite citizens citizenship for, as the Bible just said, 10 generations. Now, to understand the issue for this is to know that the Old Testament law was given to who? The nation of Israel. 
Now, some people, once again, they take this and they apply this to everyone who is born out of wedlock nowadays. Now, the problem with that is, if you only teach that for nowadays, then you might as well teach that Yahshua never died. Yahshua didn't say it is finished. Because once you, once you teach this as a one-sided story like this, then you're pretty much going against the rest of the Bible. Because we was, the rest who wasn't Israel were Gentiles and have been grafted in spiritually. The Most High is long-suffering and the Most High say he does all that he can so no one should perish. It don't matter about how that baby got her. I mean, it does matter with, you're going to have to pay for the sin. But that child didn't ask to be here once again. Nor does, nor, nor does that child deserve that punishment for what you have done what we have done in this life, you know. So, when you think about that, now, let me put this on your mind. How many babies were born from a man that have raped a woman or a teenager? You see my point? That woman was raped, beat, left for dead. And the child came on the scene why would the most high destroy that child and say that that child would not see heaven when that child was brought her through rape so many times you have seen where a father have raped their own daughter a grandfather have raped their granddaughter in this life bad things happen many children have been born out of wedlock and once again, it turned out very good. Some turned out for the worst, though. But once again, children are a blessing. No matter, once again, what has happened. They didn't ask to come here. Now, here I have to tie this in. Because look at how many children have been murdered through abortion. Think about that. And I know some people be like, well, they... To me, that wasn't even they wasn't they wasn't even born. They never did exist. That is a lie, excuse me, from the devil himself. Many babies have been murdered through abortion. They have made so much money off abortion, and then many have been adopted. And then look at how many children that was born with problems because. Their mother did drugs or their father might have done some type of drugs and the child came out all messed up behind your cocaine habit, your crack habit. See, my point once again is these children, these babies are coming here out of wedlock and we know it's so many right now, so many. But the love that the most high, the most high have, the love that the most high have for single moms, period, it's awesome. There have been too many people that have straightened up, you know, behind where my baby was out of wedlock. See, you never, you never supposed to destroy the child. You never supposed to end that child's life. Scripture teaches us that. I know a few people that have went through this once again, and their child was a blessing. Now, when you think about, like I just said about abortion, people that, that, that say it's okay to go ahead and murder the child because they say that the fetus is pretty much not a child. But I have a scripture for that too. Jeremiah 1 and 5. What did the Most High say? He told Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I already had you set apart. That's what the Bible shows. So that shows you life already. In the Old Testament, Old Covenant, a person was a bastard if their mother was a non-Israelite, pretty much. But see, if they was to bring 
hard up law right now about adultery. Just say right now if you committed adultery, your punishment was death, like it was then. You know how many people be dead right now? You know how many people will not be living right now because of adultery, because of abortion, murder, because of real talk. A lot of us can look in the mirror and say, boy, thank you, Father, for grace and mercy, because I have done this, I have done that, I have done a whole lot of things. That's unpleasing to your sight. We all have done some things in this life that we pretty much going to take to our grave that we don't want nobody to know about. But I guarantee you somebody know about it the most time. But we have been forgiven. There is only one thing that the most time said in his word that's unforgiving, which is the unpardonable sin. But he told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I hate you already set apart. The Most High told the children of Israel not to fool with pagans, pagan nations. But they did anyway. So that's why he called the offspring pretty much bastards. Unapproved marriages. Look at what Solomon done with all those wicked women. So it was up like that to 10 generations at the Bible say. A lot of people right now tell me they believe a child born outside of marriage wedlock can't be saved. But does that does the scripture teach you that? Or are you just staying on Deuteronomy and you forgetting about grace and mercy? See what I'm saying? Now here's something to point out about this scripture. This verse is speaking of those excluded from the assembly. We can say the tabernacle. It's not speaking at all about salvation. And then when you fast forward in a, in a new covenant and go to a book like Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, it teaches you once again by grace. You've been saved through faith. Not something you're doing on your own. That is the gift of the Most High. To say that a baby born out of wedlock right now cannot enter the kingdom, you pretty much are saying he or she is not a gift from the Most High. Our salvation is based on the Most High's grace through faith. Not on a situation until which we was born, my brothers and sisters. Because the real birth is, the real born from above is being born from above. The real baptism is baptism in the Holy Spirit. And if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you've been baptized with just water baptism and the water don't save you, you can go down to dry devil and come up a wet devil. But through the Holy Spirit is what saves us. word have to be once again rightly divided now I want to put this on your mind before I wrap this video up because I want to go back to Abram well let me say Abraham no his name was changed Abraham when you look at this is my question to y'all I already know the answer but I love to see y'all feedback y'all know how I am look at Abraham and Sarah they had the promised child Isaac but then they got ahead of the Most High also. Abraham and Hagar had Ishmael. That was the handmaiden, Hagar. But the Most High still blessed Ishmael when you really catch the story. But Isaac was the promised child. And the Most High said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the lad and your maid. Now, when you read the scriptures, it might look like a contradiction because it tells you Abraham was given over to Hagar by Sarah. Now, my question to you is, was Abraham married to Hagar at that time? If Hagar was married to Abraham when they had sex in Ishmael took place 
later on. Was she already Abraham's wife or was she supposed to become Abraham's wife later on? Or was she just a concubine? Did Abraham commit adultery with Hagar? Or did he marry her before sex took place? Because the Bible does say that Sarah gave her to Abraham to be his wife. So, did it happen before or after? My question to you. It is a sin to have sex outside of marriage. No if, ands, or buts about it. I, if I had three or four more hands, I'd throw all of them up because I'm very guilty of doing that. A lot of y'all have been guilty of doing it too. Just say amen. Thank the Most High once again for grace and mercy. I have never been married, but I have shacked up. You know, shacking up is not a covenant. So, I've never been married legally. <laughs> and I've slept around with more than one person. Not a shame to admit nothing I have done in this life. The only way, the only way we're going to reach people is to tell the truth. The Most High shows so much love, grace, and mercy toward me, toward a lot of people I know, toward you. So, once again, it don't matter how the baby got her. Yes, you did commit that sin, but the Most High is going to take care of that child, and you will be punished. Go back to um, David when, when adultery took place. David and Bathsheba. You know, David pretty much committed murder and adultery. This was the man considered after God's own heart, the Most High's own heart. But look at what his punishment was. His firstborn was taken away. His child was taken away. Solomon came later on. But that child died because of what David done. Sometimes, this is just a thought in my mind, I wonder, do the Most High take away children because he can see so further down the line than any of us as a punishment because he can see so far like it might have been worse for that child if they would have stayed around my mom always told me before she got married they had a little girl and the little girl died I supposed to have a sister but she died so it's like my mom always told me she thinks that was part of her punishment because she wasn't ready and she said the baby never made it so once again, it's a sin to have sex outside of marriage. Hebrews 13 and 4 calls it fornication in the Bible. Some translations you see might say sexual immorality. But once again, it's not the child's fault how they get her. The unpardonable sin, once again, as I stated earlier, is what won't be forgiven. Some people say, well, you know, you commit suicide, you ain't gonna see heaven. Scripture don't really say that, do it. Because, see, you don't know really who going to see heaven because it's not up to you. The Bible didn't even mention suicide as the unpardonable sin. That's something to think about. A lot of people say you commit suicide, you're going to hell. Just the other day, a young man, 12 years old, got tired of being bullied at school. So he took a gun and blew his head off. 12 years old. Who am I to say that young man won't see heaven? Young man ain't even lived his life. There are people younger than that that have committed suicide in his life. So when you start talking about the unpardonable sin, that's the sin that will not be forgiven. I didn't mean to go off into that. I already done videos about suicide. But the unpardonable, the unforgivable sin, or as we call it, blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. Go to Mark chapter 3 and look at verses 22 through 30. You can go to Matthew 12, 22 through 32. Yahshua said, truly I tell you, people can be forgiven all of their sins and every slander they utter. But then he gives one exception. Mark 3 and 28. He said, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of a what? 
That's an eternal sin. There is no forgiveness for blaspheming. No forgiveness at all. So, when you look at children who are innocent, the parents might have did the sin, but the child is innocent. The Most High did this when you're looking in the Old Covenant. He did this to keep Israel, the chosen, pure and strong. Because there was a lot of mess going on back then. A lot of idolatry. A lot of wickedness. A lot of stuff. He did that for a reason. To keep them pure and strong. Now, once again, you have a chance to be grafted in. Do, do this mean you should go out and whore around and have babies out of wear like you shouldn't? Don't do it. I'm not saying to do that. <laughs> what I'm saying is, there is grace and there is mercy. You are spirit, spiritually grafted in. Once again, if you teach just saying that applies to right now and they can't make it to heaven, then you're not rightly dividing the word. That means Yahshua once again died for nothing. This reminds me of the question I get a lot about can women be saved through childbearing? You know, I did a, a separate video about that too, so that's my time, my brothers and sisters. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. I hope this can help you out. Um, you know who you are. Take care.